everybody's making a skirmish game these days, it seems. And I'm here to take a look at one of the newest. I picked up a rule set called Otherworld Fantasy Skirmish. And as it says here, Otherworld Miniatures Presents. So it's produced by a company called Otherworld Miniatures. You might know them for making um, minis that seem to be inspired very much by first edition D&D, or rather AD&D illustrations. They look straight out of the Monster Manual. So they have these pig-faced orcs, for example, most famously. Uh, they've decided to publish a game that you can play with their miniatures, or any others. You're not limited to them. And you might wonder what competence do as a miniature company have at producing actual rules. Well, uh, it seems they wanted that too, because they farmed it out. It's published by Otherworld, but the game system is actually based on that used by a company called Crooked Dice Game Design Studio, who have produced a number of rule sets before. And they use the same rules engine for them, which they call the Action Colon Engine. And they've been adapted to a fantasy setting here. So what's... well, and you can you can get this from the Other World Miniatures website. I forget how much it costs. It's 136 pages, counting all the indexes in it and uh, appendices and everything. It's in color. Uh, the illustrations, the, are, the drawings are all black and white. Uh, color illustrations are pictures of miniatures in dioramas. And as far as I can tell, they're pretty much all from the other world line. And these are nice pictures and of nicely painted miniatures. So so it's it's a good way to illustrate a miniatures game. Um the rules look let, let's uh, well if, if you go through the rules they they're not that dissimilar from most games. I mean uh models have a number of stats and uh, they can move and fight and whatnot. Um, the interesting thing where, where games differ a lot is how activation happens. What, what, the turn order and who gets to move and act when. This, I feel, is one of the areas where, where, uh, where a game can really stand out and, and sort of... Uh, be different. In this system, you pretty much, uh, it seems like you never get to activate all your models in a single turn. Uh, because at the start of your turn, you get a number of activation tokens. And then you can get a few more through certain special rules, but but the base number is is half of the number of models. So so in the baseline is you you're going to get to activate half your models each each turn. And if you have some other special uh, traits like, uh, well we'll get to that. They can give you more tokens. I I'm not sure if you can ever get up to a hundred percent. But anyway, this makes it. So a large portion of the tactics of the game is choosing which models to activate, of course, and when. Movement is nothing special. There's um, uh, the only real one of the few real typos I've found here is in the movement rules where it talks about obstacles, and there's a, a sentence talking about. A die roll but the rest of the rules don't actually mention any die rolls I think they got confused with the jumping rules but never mind it's easy enough to figure out um, every, all, all the die rolls are on d6s by the way and uh, you have to when you shoot or melee you first have to roll to hit and then you roll to cause damage and
And this is where I get a little critical, perhaps, of the rules, because the both damage and statistic tests, they require chart lookups. You have these charts where it tells you the stats and how much you have to roll. And here you talk about the difference between strength and defense for the damage roll. And I, I suppose these charts are simple enough that they will, will become second nature if you play the game a lot. And you could, you know, um, the, for example, the damage chart, you could say that, okay, the basic roll is a 4 plus to damage and modified by the difference between strength and defense. If strength is higher, you get an easier damage roll, and if defense is higher, you get a more difficult one. And so far, so good, except they seem to have a design um, uh, mandate that they don't want any automatic successes or failures, so you can never get better than a 2 plus roll, for example, a 1 is always a fail. And they don't want you to have an auto fail either well they do if if defense is six higher than uh strength you can't damage them but they have they they they, they go above six on a d6 by saying that you have to first roll a six and then roll again and get a four plus if, if uh, the difference is really high for example And similarly, they, they extend the chart of stat tests by having this roll for, first roll once and then roll again. Um, so I suppose you only need to look at the table in the extreme cases where you have really high numbers. Uh, morale tests, of course, are important. That is the, um, as in most miniature combat games, morale is one of the more important things. Uh, they have the various statuses you can have, uh, how you calculate victory points, uh, magic, and I, I should mention that there are a couple of, of cases of, of um, organization in this book that strike me as a little bit odd. For example, uh, there don't seem to be any direct damage spells in the magic chapter, and that's because they are counted not as spells, but they turn up as abilities. For example, Arcane Bolt, and uh, something as simple as Cure Wounds. They, they, you, you don't use those... They're not called spells, they're called abilities. And I think the distinction is... Well, I'm not sure what the distinction is. Why why one is the one and the other. It, uh, I don't know. Well, an ability is something you can always use, and the spells can be one use. But they're not all one use. So... Mm. But the most, um, the strangest organizational thing is that you're reading about equipment and in the equipment list suddenly you have armor. Oh, so armor is different from defense, apparently. You have light armor, heavy armor, and shield. And these, here rules are introduced uh, for the heavy armor and light armor in the shield for an extra step in combat, which seemingly becomes... It, it's essentially an armor save, and it happens between the hit roll and damage roll. So if you can... Uh, it says here, a light armor will negate a successful attack on a d6 roll of 6. And negating an attack, a successful attack, is a successful hit roll. So if you roll to hit and then you roll your armor roll, you don't get to roll damage at all. I don't suppose it really matters at which point you roll the armor test, but you would think they would note mention that in the combat chapter. But, oh well. As long as you figure it out. 
Uh, and there's a lot of different abilities and traits and things that models can have to differentiate them. There are rules for building your faction, as it's called. Your warband, as it would be in some other games. You have alignment, you have some, some that are good and some are evil and they don't mix. Um, models are divided up again by how strong they are, if they're legends, companions or minions. And there will be limits in scenarios. The scenarios are called encounters, by the way. And there's some rules for customizing factions. And they give you typical stats for typical characters you can play, including monsters and so forth. And then they have an encounter guide, which is they provide six different basic types of scenarios or encounters and uh, they give you some ideas about how to uh, set up the sides for that and an interesting thing here is that there's always a kind of um, um, asymm asymmetry here there's always an attacking and a defending side and the defending side gets to place adventure tokens on the board which the attacking side can interact with and then you have to see what happens it could be treasure it could be a trap it could be a wandering monster you don't know until you check so it's kind of like a dungeon crawl <laughs> in that sense um, they have some, some examples of fast play encounters as well. And then they provide a short, what they call a campaign. It's, it's a little odd compared to other games in that it's not a campaign in the sense that you're following the same characters. It's a campaign in the sense that there are three scenarios, or sorry, encounters. They're linked through story, not through characters. The, 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 uh, fighting forces in each one are completely different. Uh, so this basic set has no campaign rules in the sense that most other games, uh, what, what other games would call a campaign. That is how to uh, build a group of, of, of characters that you improve and follow over time. That is not in here. They've said that this might come up as a supplement later on uh, but as it stands this is a set of rules for playing single uh, fights single encounters uh, and some of these things you need like the um, um, the roster sheets they have provided PDFs for Oddly enough, not on their website, but on their Facebook page. Um, I, I would really like a PDF of this reference sheet, because I think you need it. You need the tables if you're going to play this. Uh, and so I asked them about it, and they said they would try to get one uh, and give it out. Because... Um, when you buy when you buy this physical book, the PDF version is not automatically included. You have to buy that separately, and I'm not going to buy the PDF of the whole rule book just so I can print out one chart. That's uh, not worth it. So, what's my conclusion? Well, I'd have to play test it to know what it's really like. Uh, this first look is just supposed to give you an idea of the contents and and some of my first impressions of the contents and what it seems it would be good for. As I've mentioned, it's having a chart lookup is 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 a hard sell for me. It's I feel that is usually an unnecessary step that just takes up so much time and it's not worth the bother. Um, this one might be okay, considering that it's a very fast one. 
Um, it, and in some cases you can do the calculation in your head. You don't need to look up the chart once you learn it. So maybe, maybe it'll be okay. Um, again, I would have to test it to see. But that'll be all for this first look, I believe. I will see you next time I produce a video. Until then, this is Doc Ian, signing off.